Hi everyone, Evan Alexander here with another Vectorworks 3D Basics tutorial. I want to talk today about navigation and how to easily move around inside of these environments that you're creating now. We'll keep this quick and easy. I have a really basic scene here, just a little bit of geometry from, from a bigger set from a few years ago. Um, and let's go to top plan view. So for starters, if you have a full size keyboard that has a, a number pad on the right hand side, this is the easiest and quickest way to navigate around. If I were to say hit the number one key, uh, that is going to take me into a left isometric view. And so you have to, if you look visually at the layout of the keypad, it kind of corresponds to the different views. So number one is left isometric. Number two is a front view. Number three is a right isometric. Six will take us to the right. Nine and so on and so on. And so you can work your way all the way around this object just by hitting these keypads. And then if you hit zero, it'll take you back to top plan view. Five will take you back to top view, which is a little different than top plan. We'll talk about that later. When we get into hybrid symbols, that will become a big part of it. But this, I use this all the time. It's great. If you have a laptop, this isn't going to help you. The numbers above the QWERTY letters is, is not going to do this for you. It has to be a numpad. Um, if you don't have one and you are on a laptop and you, you, know, you do a lot of 3D, you can buy external ones that you know, are like a USB plug. Um, and I highly, highly recommend it. So that's great and just a really good quick way to kind of get into some, you know, of the kind of predetermined views. Whoop, looks like we've freaked out Vectorworks a little bit here. Um, okay, so that's the first part. Um, but we're looking at wireframe. So before we do more navigation, let's just talk about how to kind of look at and interact with your model. Um, I like to work mostly in OpenGL. Um, it gives you kind of a solid surface. It feels kind of like SketchUp a little bit. So there's this little teapot menu up here. And uh, if I click on this, it gives us all the different options for rendering, um, which is a whole other tutorial into itself. But um, if we were to try, say, fast render works or final quality render works, um, you'd see that what happens is we get this kind of rendered view. It doesn't look great. Um, and every time I move my view, it has to go through and kind of re-render and reprocess. This is taking about, I don't know, three or four seconds for this model. But uh, on more complicated models, this would take a lot longer. And so it's not really a great solution. Not to mention the fact that it does not look great. <laughs> it looks pretty sketchy. So final quality render works will do better. You can see it kind of building from the center out. Um, but this is taking, you know, it's taking 30 seconds here. Um, I guess it's totaling up maybe 10 seconds, but still not great. And kind of hard to see actually what's going on here. So what we really like is OpenGL. And there's a few different reasons that we like OpenGL because OpenGL will cache, uh, meaning store in its memory, this uh, kind of rendering state. And so then as we kind of fly around and move around, it doesn't need to re-render every time. Um, if you go back to wireframe, if you make some big changes, then it will have to update. So, um, so just be aware. So this is for building and working. This is my main go-to mode. But, uh, but we can enhance this and we can make it a little better. So I'm going to click on this teapot again. And now that we have OpenGL set up, it's going to open up this OpenGL options for us. And this dialog box will pop up. So this is what comes up by default, I think. The detail is set to low. And so for this model, it doesn't really matter so much because it's a pretty boxy model. But if you had a lot of curves in your design, round platforms or uh, columns, shapes like that, it, it's going to be pretty faceted. Low is going to not give you a lot of detail to keep things kind of speedy. So I like to take this up. And it, it all depends on the complexity of your model. 
and it depends on the power of your machine. So play around with this a little bit. Um, the big one that I like is draw edges. And so this right here is my basic kind of go-to for working. Now, once I've set that, this will always remain that way. So I can, um, I can go back to top plan view. And by going back to top plan view, it automatically pops you back into wireframe. Uh, every time. So you can see here we're back in wireframe. If I hit Command Shift G or Control Shift G on Windows, it's going to take me back to OpenGL. And you can see because we haven't changed anything, it loads up really fast. Even on big complex models, this loads up pretty well. Uh, you might have to wait for that initial load, but then you're okay. To be able to see what you're doing in, you know, without looking at wireframe, it's totally worth the load times. So, um, so all right, so now we can kind of see the model. So let's talk a little bit more about how to best kind of navigate. So we talked about the number pad here, and this is great for you know getting us into some of these standard views that we need. Um, but what if you want to just fly around and kind of move around? So in, in that case, then I switch over to the flyover tool. Um, the shortcut by default is Shift C. On my workspace, I've set it up for F, flyover, because I use it all the time. Um, and so there's a few different modes here. The first and default mode uh, is just view center mode. So basically what it means is whatever you're looking at, it's going to use the center of your screen as kind of its pivot point. Um, in ha no matter where you click on the screen, it's always going to kind of rotate around basically the center of your screen. Let's go to OpenGL so you can see. So all I'm doing is I'm right clicking and I'm holding the mouse button down and I'm just dragging my mouse and then I let go again and I will pick it up again. Um, so that's that's good. This is great. Uh, the mode that I use the most is the second one called interactive origin mode and it takes a little bit to get used to this but it's really worth understanding and using this mode. With this mode, you click once to basically tell Vectorworks where to rotate around, and then you click, hold, and drag to kind of move around. So uh, let's see if we can see it. So if I were to say click right here on this platform, you can see I get this little black kind of gimbal here. So now when I move, no matter where I click, this is going to be the rotation point of our model. Um, and so this is great because it really lets you kind of dial in how to move around the space depending on what you're trying to look at. So if we're trying to, you know, say work on this doorknob, I'm going to click right there and now my rotation is going to come around that. If I was working on this light switch, I could click here and now this has kind of become the center of my rotation. I can always hit the space bar to go to pan tool and just drop it again. Um, and I'm zooming in and out with the scroll wheel on my mouse. So now I'll click up here, and now my rotation is happening from the top. So this is what I use the most. You just have to get used to and remember to kind of click and then hold and drag the mouse to move around. This, this other mode here um, is object center mode. So basically, if you have an object uh, selected, and uh, so I've selected this picture on the wall. Now, whatever is selected, well, you can see the gimbal has moved here. That will become the uh, kind of center point of my world. So if I switch back to direct select, this time we're gonna select the light switch and we switch over and now you can see this has moved around. So it doesn't really matter what you use. You should play around with this and just kind of get comfortable with it, okay? Um, now, and that's really it. Uh, that is kind of the basics of how I navigate almost uh, any scene. We are still, as you can see here, in orthogonal as our projection mode. And uh, that can be confusing when you start actually building stuff because you're, you're not really looking at stuff in perspective. You can see that all the verticals are still truly vertical, right? It is an orthogonal view you know like if you're in an actual right isometric view here you can see that like you would expect everything is kind of straight uh, and plumb but even as you kind of move around you can see the perspective starts to get really weird um, 
So at that point, then I would switch over to perspective. Th there's narrow and wide perspective. I just stay away from them. I use normal perspective. And you can see that now we get what you kind of expect, you know, more like what your eyes would see or what a camera would pick up where, you know, things start to kind of taper and the perspective works uh, more like the real world. So this is this is great. I, I do like this. The problem with uh, being in normal perspective mode is that let's say now you're flying around and you think, oh, OK, now I need to fix something on this door. So I want to go to front view. So now when I switch to front view, I'm actually in a perspective front view, not an orthogonal front view. Here, we'll switch and you can see the difference, right? This is front view, like we're drafting or we're modeling. Uh, normal perspective is more, uh, you know, if we go to plan view here uh, and we switch to normal perspective, you can see, you know, you wouldn't want to work on your ground plan like this, right? Because it's really confusing. But when we go back to orthogonal, right now we're back in kind of drafting mode here. So, so I, I tend to switch between normal perspective and orthogonal more as a way of kind of seeing what it is that I'm working on as I'm, you know, flying around in the world. So um, it depends also, uh, just be aware, like I'm in this, uh, what do they call this interactive origin mode and I'm clicking that, that little gimbal that shows up for the rotation point. It's, I don't know why, it, but here it's tiny. If we zoom in, you can see that, it, whoop, that here it is right here. Um, so don't be alarmed. I don't know why it does that. Maybe video card stuff. Um, but that's really it. Th there are other tools built into the tool set, the walkthrough tool, translate view, rotate view. Uh, honestly, I, I don't use any of them. So feel free to explore these and you know, know that they're here. I think you can walk around more like a video game kind of navigation, W, A, D, Z, or S, if that means anything to you. Um, I find that the flyover tool is pretty much all that I need and, uh, you know, gets me there. So OpenGL and flyover tool is, is it. And that will kind of cover you for anything else. Again, if you pop back to top plan view, I just hit zero on my number pad. It's going to automatically kind of bump me into wireframe again, which is great. I can always use the shortcut command shift W, control shift W on Windows to just manually jump back, okay? Um, one more thing that I wanna mention, if we go into our Vectorworks preferences here and we look under, I believe it is display, no, 3D, okay. So you have some options here. Um, render mode when changing from top plan to a 3D view. I have mine set to wireframe. Uh, here's your options, wireframe or OpenGL. And then projection when changing from top plan to a 3D view, do you want to be in orthogonal or one of these perspectives? Now, I believe by default, when you uh, first install a new version of Vectorworks, it is set to OpenGL and normal perspective. So what does that mean? You're in top plan view. And now if I just hit right isometric or left isometric, Oh, look at that. It didn't actually do it. But if I grab the flyover tool, well, it didn't do it again. I don't know what I did wrong there. Um, oh, it's taken me back to wireframe and orthogonal. Interesting. Maybe I didn't commit to these. Normal perspective. Okay. Zero. Shift C. Aha! Okay, now it's working. Right, so now the minute I'm just hitting the number pad, you can see how it instantly jumps me into OpenGL and into normal perspective. And you think this, you know, maybe this is great. Here's my problem with this. If I'm in top plan view and I say, okay, now I want to go into front view because I'm going to add a door or a window. Uh, it's going to take me into OpenGL and it's going to take me into uh, perspective. And that's not what I want because I don't want to ever build in perspective. So I don't like this. Uh, and so I have changed mine to say my default render mode is still wireframe. I want to control when I turn OpenGL on and off. 
And same thing with the projection. I always want to be in orthogonal. You know, maybe if you're if you're done building and you're just navigating or you're, I don't know, flying your art director around or you're, you know, setting up shots for render works, maybe you'd want to be in this other mode. But as I'm building stuff, I want to be able to get to these orthogonal views and say, hey, I want to control when this is on and off. So just be aware in your preferences under 3D, you have to figure out where you want to set these that makes the most sense for you. There is no right or wrong. It's really just a uh, personal preference. So that's it. Happy navigating. Good luck. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.